Welcome back. I'm Tyler. You're watching Scarfing Scarves, and welcome to the 49th installment of last week Lolita News. At the top of the segment, Angelic Pretty managed to set sails sky high with the release of a cosmic print. The only colorway that's remotely tolerable is navy, and we don't have any time to talk about that right now because Ruffle Chat is overdue for an explosion, and the aforementioned Facebook group has managed to pack 50 pounds of TNT into an Instagram story, like the fuse, and launch it directly into the face of a D-list celebrity. Celebrity known primarily for being a British Pratt, an actress on NBC's The Good Place, and a literally who for anyone who has better things to do with their lives. We've got a lot to unpack here. I'm still not certain of what the hell happened. And without further ado, let's get down to brass tacks. Welcome to Jamila Jamil Jacked Up. It all started in Ruffle Chat. The OP, who we'll call Shelby, relayed a tale of how she had replied to an Instagram story posted by the actress about feeling poorly with something along the lines of feel better soon. Shelby has a private Instagram account, but her listed interest in Lolita fashion is public. And not long after Shelby sent her well wishes, the following story appeared on Jamila's Instagram account. Just for anyone out here idolizing Lolita as an aesthetic and trying to do the schoolgirl thing as a grown adult, Reminder, Lolita is about a pedophile. This was preceded by not trying to be an arsehole, but the Lolita messaging on here is problematic as all hell. It's not a great sign of where we're at as a culture to continue to sexualize the prepubescent, lost, vulnerable schoolgirl. It signals that women need to be young and powerless and cutesy to be sexy. It sends the signals to men that this is the case too. You can also be strong and powerful, and most importantly, yourself, and find someone who finds that sexy. Lolita is a story about a pedophile, all pass. Shelby understandably interpreted this as an attack on EGL and alleged that Jamila must have seen her response to the story, clicked on her profile, and then made these Instagram stories denouncing the fashion. Ruffle Chat lost their mind over this to the tune of 300 plus comments, and Jamila's account has very likely since seen its first dose of a thousand ruffled petties. And that is understandable. However, before I pillory this woman for sinning against all things sacred, dig up her entire life and drag her for filth, we first have to lay out the facts. To do that, I would like to first draw your attention to her Instagram account, an account with roughly 2 million followers. 2 million followers who, I'm certain, reply to her Instagram stories in numbers that would be nigh impossible to keep up with for anything other than an auto-response or an assistance whose sole purpose in life was to dig through the entreaties of the masses and then cry into their coffee at the cruelty of it all. Zul knows for every 10 stories a celebrity receives, five of them are telling them to eat themselves into traffic, one is calling them fat, and the other other four are testaments as to why the human race was a grand mistake. There is a 0.1% chance of there being a margin of error that lets something decent slip through. And if you're a public figure of any kind, the first thing you do to prolong your sanity is to treat the comment and inbox section like the ravenous maelstrom of unending trauma that it truly is. Which is to say, in brief, as strange as it may seem for Jamila to be posting about Lolita specifically after Shelby sent a reply on Instagram, it is very likely a complete and utter coincidence. Now before you cancel me for the offense, let me back this up. Taking you back to the original Instagram story, you'll notice in reading the text that Jamila never once uses the words Lolita fashion. Her reference seems to be the capitalized Lolita as in the title of the book, even mentioning what said novel was about in the image. The song she's noted in the bottom left corner by rap band E40 called She Was Only 16 is featured. And a quick Google search into the lyrics of that song come back with things that put me off my appetite for at least an hour. And that was post wishing I had a time machine to go back to 1990 track this guy down and toss my coffee cup in the exact trajectory that would lead to one assault charge, and an interesting time trying to explain exactly how some overly verbose Pratt cracked the theory of time travel for the express purpose of noping some two-bit poet in the face. It should be noted that this song explicitly describes a grown man having carnal relations with a 16-year-old girl. Said song is still available for streaming on multiple platforms, and before you leave to rue the fate of the species, I'd like a little more time to crack this case of mistake an outrage because her second Insta story is even more curious. Again, while it is justifiable for this community to be upset at this lady after just a cursory read and the word of one of our own, I would urge caution post reading in to a bit of the following. You'll notice that, again, there is no mention of Lolita fashion specifically, and while the quote Lolita messaging on here could be interpreted as an acknowledgement of Shelby's reply, with the context we have of this woman's 2 million follower count, it is far more likely that even if J 
Jamila did see the message, she didn't take the time out of her day to dig into the private Instagram of one person in her sea of followers. That said, given the use of the nauseating song and the equally disturbing prevalence of nymphet fashion on the Instagram platform, rather than talking about Shelby's response in her overburdened inbox, it is far more likely that she is referring to exactly what she listed, which is Lolita with a capital L, otherwise known as the book and the associated nymphet fashion that glorifies it to an extent that it's only a matter of time until Instagram goes full Tumblr and nopes the lot of them into the pit of no return. At which point I will celebrate and immediately cease to exist on the platform because we all know algorithms can't be trusted and any mention of Lolita fashion will be removed long before the tidal wave of photos too explicit to show to anyone other than the Marquis de Sade even lose a pixel of their nightmarish debauchery. Life isn't fair for the poorly named niche fashion enthusiast, but my suffering aside, after carefully digging through the subtext of these two Instagram stories and the ensuing outrage, I cannot lose my ish on this woman with what evidence we have. All that said, those of you out there whose initial perusal of these stories took them to a place of anger shouldn't blame yourselves. It is not uncommon for this fashion to receive undeserved criticism by the misinformed masses too lazy to do two seconds of Google searching before they spout off on something they don't know anything about. And if that is on the off chance what Jamila is doing here, then I will gladly speculate on how many horse kicks to the head it takes to be that dense. I was angry too, initially. And while it might have misfired this time, the fact that our community is always prepared to defend our own is still great. So, with all that taken into account, there is still something good we can draw from this. After copious amounts of research that was initially undertaken for the purpose of verbally obliterating a person who appeared to be dragging a community more important to me than any notion of common sense, I came across a trend with Jamila. This actress appears to be heavily involved in running a social media campaign against the objectification of women, and while some of her more heated activist messaging leaned a tad too much into the dramatic for my taste, as a feminist myself, as much as I wanted to go full plague of locust on her at the time, I couldn't help but agree with her. Her discussion of self-esteem, fat shaming, and society's expectations of how a woman should be were consistent topics. And by the time I'd reassessed her Insta stories, cooled down, and took another look at my research, her work had me thinking. How does Lolita fashion affect self-esteem? A question I'll be answering in the next video, mostly because anyone who sat through this one is already bored to tears, and to give you a much needed break before I launch into a completely unnecessary tirade on the psychological implications of participating in a Princess Peach cosplay on a regular basis, that's all the time we have for tonight. Thank you for watching last week Lolita News. This has been Tyler, you've been watching Scarfing Scarves. And before you find the nearest cat video to cleanse your soul from this god-awful dive into maybe all of our outrage was misdirected, oops, now I feel awful, let's toss a pitchfork at the reporter to make us feel better, you should know that this show is sponsored in part by BB&B. They have just announced a collaborative piece inspired by none other than the most infamous Pratt in town, and should you happen to be low on sodium, love ice cream, or generally feel that retail therapy is the only thing that could distract you from this god-awful marathon of a video, then you can check out their shop at bbmb.net for all your jewelry needs. That is, specifically, if you dare fight me for the lot of them. Link to their shop below, and to wrap things up with a big fracking bow, I'd like to thank my patrons for their existence in general. You guys are the people primarily responsible for my ability to take a hairy topic, say things that will likely piss off half the community, and then split the entire thing into two completely unnecessary videos for reasons that must have some something to do with the deeply seated spite for all concepts of love and joy. Those of you who want to join their numbers and or watch the world burn with marshmallows in hand are welcome to head over to patreon.com slash lastweeklolitanews. I can't promise the mob won't track you down too, but I do solemnly swear that you will regret every decision that led you here from the very day that you were born. I am not responsible for the horrific things you were about to see. Thanks again guys, and I'll catch you next time.